Edwin Drake is not a name most people can readily identify. Nevertheless, he played a critical role in America's development as an industrial giant and inadvertently in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Drake entered the world of business as a hotel and dry goods clerk, but soon ventured into the railroad industry where he moved up from clerking to express agent and then to train conductor. However, increasing nerve and muscle pain made the job too challenging to maintain. And so he retired from the profession in 1857. Dejectedly, he checked into a hotel, not quite sure what to do with his life. There, in the lobby of the hotel, Providence intervened. As Drake sat quietly, one assumes reading, a group of businessmen, founders of the Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company, or what became Seneca Oil, sat excitedly talking about oil seeping up from the earth in places like Titusville, Pennsylvania. Now, while most locals saw the oil as a nuisance, the rock oil men knew there was a great profit to be had if they could just get down to the oil source. If only there was someone who could travel to Titusville and investigate if the oil was extractable. At that moment, the eavesdropping Drake spoke up. He shared how he had recently retired as a train conductor and still had a pass that allowed him to travel freely on the railroad. Consequently, he would not have to charge travel expenses to investigate the oil seepage and the feasibility of extracting oil at Titusville. The oil men were thrilled and they hired Drake on the spot. Shortly afterwards, Drake enthusiastically set out on his new mission. After investigating the site, Drake determined Titusville was a promising location for oil extraction and purchased a parcel of land for the company, who promptly instructed him to procure the oil. The investors hoped the oil found at Titusville might be the answer to replacing the foul-burning whale oil used in most lamps of the era. Drake believed it was. The enthusiasm to harvest oil from the earth for profit was contagious, and soon other investors joined the initial group, changing the name to Seneca Oil Company. Drake himself was so excited, he invested his entire savings of $200 into the company and set to work. Drake's initial attempts at simply collecting oil from surface leaks failed, leading him to try boring, a method often used for mining salt. Realizing he needed greater expertise, he hired William Smith, known as Uncle Billy, hoping his previous experience as a salt well driller would transfer over to drilling for oil. He also purchased a steam engine and built a derrick to help with the boring process. But the initial excitement gave way to discouragement as the team faced cave-ins, flooding, and even a fire that burned the derrick, excess oil, and Uncle Billy's home to the ground. At this point, Colonel Drake, a nickname the owners had given him to attract new investors, was now being referred to as Crazy Drake by the nearby townspeople. But Drake was relentless, and he soon created an innovative metal casing to house the drill. It worked, and on August 27th, 1859, the dream of extracting oil from the earth became an exciting reality. Overnight, his oil drill made whaling obsolete. Unfortunately for Drake, while others gained great wealth from his invention, the failure to acquire a patent on his drilling device, along with poor investments and his increasingly frail body left him impoverished. Even Seneca Oil had abandoned him, but a grateful Titusville, seeing his plight, rescued him with a generous donation. Ultimately, the state of Pennsylvania stepped in to help Drake, who would eventually be known as the father of petroleum industry by supplying him with a lifelong pension. Thanks to Drake's efforts, the black gold rush was on, and soon thousands were investing, drilling, and speculating in oil. One such speculator was a young actor who had long lived in the shadow of his father and brother's acting careers. But by 1863, he'd become an actor of great renown and was growing comfortably rich, but not comfortable enough for his mounting living expenses. News of the oil boom inspired the young actor to invest most of his wealth into a three and a half acre plot of land just 20 miles south of Titusville. Good fortune abounded as he and his partner struck oil. But success came to a sudden end when the actors gamble on a new oil extracting technique known as shooting, which is a form of fracking using explosives, not only failed to produce more oil, 
that it actually destroyed the well. He had invested and lost almost all his money trying to harness the wealth of the black gold rush. That amount was somewhere around $6,000 or the equivalent of $100,000 today. This was not good news as the actor's voice was giving out and most likely would make it impossible to ever act again. Oh well, I'm sure the actor John Wilkes Booth will find something else to do. On April 14th, 1865, the failed oil man and actor traveled to Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. and assassinated Abraham Lincoln. The lack of black gold led to the black death of one of America's greatest presidents. We hope you enjoyed this hidden tale of a history maker. If you did, please click here to subscribe. And you will probably enjoy our video on what motivated a French World War I hero to become a Nazi collaborator in World War II.